Another key feature of lines in two dimensions is their steepness. The steepness of a line is referred to as the slope of the line. In mathematics across the world, people use the lowercase letter m to represent the slope of a line. And we need to somehow quantify this steepness. For example, you might say, well, let's measure this angle right here that this line makes with the x-axis. While that is a perfectly good approach, we don't want to introduce the geometric concept of angle. Instead, we just want to see the types of curves formed when we plot input-output relationships. So, instead of talking about this angle measure, instead the most common way that people talk about the slope of a line is by measuring between two points, say here and here, and seeing how far you'd have to travel vertically, and write that number over how far you'd have to travel horizontally to get to that next point. We call this measurement the rise over the run of the line. Or the change in y over the change in x. Because we're talking about first a vertical distance that's the change in y between these two points. And then a horizontal distance is the change in x of these two points. Another way that people write the word change in mathematics is with the Greek letter delta, which looks like a triangle. So the slope is also written as delta y over delta x. All four of these things are equivalent. The letter m always represents the slope. Slope is measured as the rise over the run. It is the change in y over the change in x, or written symbolically, delta y over delta x. So it's this rise amount between two points over top of the run amount between two points. So in this particular case, since we're counting by one in the x direction and by one in the y direction, this vertical distance is three, and this horizontal distance is two. So the slope of this particular line is m equals 3 halves. Now you might be thinking, what if I chose two different points? So for example, what if you chose this point and this point to get the slope? Well, again, let's compute the rise amount, which that appears to be 6, over the run amount, which is 4. So the slope according to those two points would be the rise 6 over the run 4, but 6 fourth reduces to 3 halves. So no matter what two points you choose, the slope of the line is constant. It's only one specific number. Which of the two lines graphed here, the red one and the blue one, is steeper? Well, if you think about it from a skiing perspective, skiing down this slope is the same amount of steepness as skiing down that slope. However, they're two very different lines. So to distinguish between the blue line and the red line slope, whenever a line is increasing from left to right, so the blue line here is what we would call an increasing line. Whenever a line is increasing, we consider the slope to be positive. Whenever the line is going down from left to right, we consider that line to be decreasing. And for all decreasing lines, we consider the slope to be negative. So let's actually compute the slope of each of these lines. If I find two points, and of course, choose points on the grid marks, choose points on the grid marks so you can do a proper counting. The rise between these two is two, and the run between these two is four, the slope here is 1 to over 2, and because the line is increasing, it's going to be positive 1 half. Now with the red line, the slope, let's take this point and this point, that's a distance of 1, that's a distance of 2, you get a slope of 1 over 2, rise over run is 1 over 2, however we need to distinguish this from the blue line slope. So because it's decreasing, this slope is negative one half. So the blue line slope is one half, positive one half. 
the, the red line slope is negative one half. But what if we know two points on the line? Is it possible to find the slope without having to graph the line? Well, I've showed you a picture here. Suppose I just gave you the two points and I said, find the slope of the line between two comma two and four five. If you didn't have grid paper, it would be annoying to have to draw the graph, then count the rise over the run between the two points. So we want to come up with a more, a more efficient way of computing the slope algebraically. Let's look at the computation from the example on the first page of this video. So here we had these two points. We did not label them as 2 comma 2 and 4 comma 5. We just counted the distance from vertical distance from here to here is 3 and the horizontal distance from here to here is 2. How could we have gotten that with the coordinates rather than simply counting? Well, notice this distance right here of 3, that's the difference of 5 and 2. In general, to get distance on the number line, you subtract. So the distance between a y value of 5 and a y value of 2 is 3. So let me write this in here. This is 5 minus 2, where that's this 5 minus that 2. And then the horizontal distance, which we counted as a distance of 2, is precisely the difference between the x-coordinates of these two points. So 4 and 2, the difference with that is 2. So if we take 4 minus 2, that gives us this distance. Let's write that in. So our vertical rise can be found by subtracting the y-coordinates, 5 minus 2. And the run, or horizontal distance, can be found by subtracting the x-coordinates, 4 minus 2. 5 minus 2 gives us 3. 4 minus 2 gives us 2. So the slope is 3 halves. This is true in general. If you have any two points, let's call one x1, comma y1, and call the other one x2, comma y2, the slope, m, is the difference in the y values, or the rise between the two points, which is y2 minus y1, over the distance between the x values, which is x2 minus x1. This could also be thought of this way. You could do y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. These two formulas give you the exact same computation. You don't need to do the computations twice. Either way is fine. We've now got a slope formula. m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Or, again, it could be y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So let's summarize a few things that we've seen so far with respect to slope. This line right here is considered to have a positive slope because it is increasing from left to right. And this formula, when you do the computation, will end up giving you a positive number in a scenario like this. This slope of this line is negative because it's decreasing from left to right. And if you were to take two points on this line and plug them into this formula, you would find out that this number you get would be a negative number. Let's now examine these two special cases. What if you have a horizontal line or a vertical line? Well, this formula still applies to them. One of them has a slope precisely 0, and the other one does not have a slope defined in the set of real numbers. Horizontal lines have a slope of 0. Vertical lines do not have a slope defined, by, defined in the real number system. Why? Well, let's use this formula to analyze the situation. Let me give you two points on a horizontal line. For example, you could take 3 comma 2 and 6 comma 2 are both on the same horizontal line. If you were to do the computation for the slope, you get m equals the difference in the y values would be 2 minus 2 over the difference in the x values. 3 minus 6, you get 0 in the top, 
negative 3 in the bottom, and you always want to reduce the fraction if it does. 0 divided by negative 3 is precisely 0. So no matter where your horizontal line is located in the two-dimensional plane, its slope will always be 0. Let's now look at the vertical line. To convince ourselves that the, the slope is not defined for a vertical line, let me give you two possible points that lie on a vertical line. 5 comma 7 and 5 comma 13 both lie on a vertical line. So let's compute the slope between the, of the line between those two points. You've got m equals, subtract the y values, 13 minus 7. Notice I subtracted from left to right here, and or sorry, right to left here, and left to right here. It doesn't matter as long as you subtract in the same direction. So here I went left to right, so that meant I need to subtract from left to right in my x values. So since I've gone from right to left here in my y values, I need to also subtract from right to left in my x values. And that would give me 5 minus 5. Well, 13 minus 7 is 6. 5 minus 5 is 0. However, this expression is not defined in the real number system. So I would not leave that the slope is 6 over 0. I would simply write the slope m is undefined. And what that means is it's not possible to represent the slope of a vertical line with a real number.